How do? My name is Andrew Hancock and I am a VMware technical architect from Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. I have worked with VMware since their birth in 1998. So that's been a quarter of a century now. I've been working with the VMware product catalog. Some of my close friends say, if you cut Andy in half, it reads VMware like a stick of rock from Blackpool Pleasure Beach. I have now written over 130 articles and recorded over 30 hours of VMware vSphere 7 and 8 videos for Experts Exchange and received 40 Expert Exchange awards over the last 11 years working with the Expert Exchange community. I am currently the overall number one point earner in the Hall of Fame. I am honoured to have been accepted into the VMware vExpert program since 2011 and I'm currently a VMware vExpert Pro for the last four years. Welcome to Hancock's VMware Half Hour. Welcome back and in today's video um, I thought for the sake of continuity um, I would show you how we use disk to VHD. If you've not seen the product, if you've not worked with the product before, if you've not seen how we can do um, a P to V, V to V, uh, using disk to VHD, um, although I do consider um, that it doesn't do all the heavy lifting for you, as I mentioned previously. All it's gonna do is create a virtual disk. Um, and then you're gonna have to create a virtual machine and add that virtual disk. But I'll, I'll, I'll show you the process. And um, uh, you can then look at the pros and cons of whether to use disk to VHD or whether to use um, Starwin's P to V slash V to V converter. And on that note, um, I have now engaged, it sounds a bit like the Starship Enterprise, that, um, but I have actually reached out to the people I know at Starwind and we're having a little look at the issues that we encountered with the live migration from VMware VC uh, to Hyper-V. And as soon as I actually get that um, sorted um, so that I can actually demonstrate it, um, then you can certainly uh, watch that video that I do for it. So... Um, I'm going to I'm going to we're going to use exactly the same machine that we've used before, and I think we'll use this as a template um, in a lot of our tests, P to V, V to V type conversions. So, we were using a um, a virtual machine called uh, BDR Backup, which is currently hosted on our VMware vSphere environment. It's hosted on a ESXi 7.02 vSAN, I think. I think it's on 7.02 vCenter server as well. It's a little bit behind them. Um, we do need to make some effort to get that one updated. Okay, so I've downloaded this to VHD. I will put that link um, in the description for you. Uh, I've installed it. It doesn't really install. It's just a zip file that you unzip and uh, you run the command uh, command program. This to VHD 64 or, or if you have a 32-bit computer, uh, this to VHD. Um, that's what it looks like. It's quite simple, really. Um, there's not really an awful lot to it. Um, so let's just go through a couple of things. First of all, just tick all the volumes that you want a P to V or V to V. Um, so this is currently a VMware virtual machine. So, you know, if you had decided that you're going to migrate to that dark side, Microsoft Hyper-V, um, because of uh, license costs, um, then... Uh, run this to VHD um, on your live virtual machine. If your live virtual machine is running services, um, live services, databases, Active Directory, um, uh, file sharing, you know, you may want to turn all that off. Um, so you've actually maybe got a consistent um, file structure. Um, although we are using volume shadow copy that I've ticked here, so it should take care of that, but obviously by the time that the actual image is completed, um, it'll be up, it'll be out of date with live. So I wouldn't really want to do it on anything that's got uh, live services that are changing. So turn those services off. So we're going to use a VHDX. Uh, we're going to use volume shadow copy. We're going to tick um, all the volumes that we want. And then we actually specify the VHD, VHDX file name. Um, now, for the sake of um, speeding this up, 
Um, I'm actually basically going to create the VHDX actually on the Hyper Hyper V server directly. Um, I could stage it. I could go to my NAS, and then I could copy it off my NAS and copy it to the the server, etc. But I thought, I know what? Let's just actually basically um, create the VHDX. Uh, so all I've done is just quickly shared um, the the VM folder to allow me to do that. So. Use v VHDX, use Volume Shadow Copy, specify your file name, tick your volumes, and click the Create button. And let's just see whether or not we get an error message. So, snapshotting volumes, copying system volume on disk zero. There we go, that's it. That's all we've got to do. Simples. Um, and if we actually have a little look at our... This is our Hyper-V server. Um, and that's our BDR backup uh, VHDX, which is currently being uh, copied. I was going to say cloned, cloned, copied. Um, yeah, clone or copied. Um, and, and that's that's it. Um, I'm just going to have to wait here now um, for 30 minutes, 60 minutes um, for that uh, VHDX to be created. And um, I'll come back. And uh, I'll show you how quickly that is basically to add to a virtual machine. Uh, we'll power it on, uh, we'll log in, and, um, and that will be proof of the pudding, as they say, um, that we can use uh, disk 2 VHD um, to uh, migrate and convert to uh, Hyper-V. So I will be uh, back shortly. OK, we're back. Um, so... It did take about 60 minutes, I think, to, to complete that. Um, so, disk export to VHD completed successfully. So, if we have a little look um, on our Hyper-V server, we can see that we've got a BDR backup, uh, which is just under 60 gig. So, um, this is the bit, personally, that I don't sort of kind of really like. Um, that, okay, fine, we've now got a VHD, VHDX, um, but we haven't got a virtual machine yet because we've got to do a little bit of create the virtual machine. Um, and that, maybe some people don't mind this. Uh, okay, so uh, right click, new virtual machine, uh, followed by next um, BDR backup, followed by next, I'm going to say Gen 2, followed by next. Yeah, I'm happy with the startup memory. Not going to connect to the network at the moment. I want to use an existing disk. I don't want to create a new disk because we've already got the disk for this. Um, I've already BDR backup. That's our disk. That's the one that we've created via disk to VHD. Followed by next. Followed by finish. And that's it. You know, that, that's the what I call the heavy lifting that VMware vCenter converted us for you. And also, just to remind you, a plug again for these guys, um, Starwind P2V slash v to v V2V converter does that automatically for you as well. Um, so why even use disk to VHD when there is another product, which, as I said, is the Swiss Army life, Swiss Army knife of P2V slash V2V products that seems to do absolutely everything. Anyway, so let's go back, as I sort of kind of promised, and turn around and say connect. and start and obviously this is a, a, a brand new okay so we would expect to see that because we've done a disk to VHD on a machine that's powered up so it's gonna flag the file system possibly as dirty but anyway um, so that's gonna go off and do its plug and play and things and um, you, will, you will note as well that this is a UFE um, server because this is Windows Server 2022 um, so it's taking care of that um, so hopefully once it's done its plug and play and sorted out the devices etc um, it will start up uh, getting devices ready now there's one thing really that um, I really need to stress um, in doing P to V's V to V's um, and this really applies to any hypervisor that you're going from if you're Converting to VMware vCenter, convert, so if, you, if you're converting to VMware vSphere or VMware Workstation or Oracle VirtualBox or Promox or 
uh, XCPNG or whatever hypervisor or you think, or are you converting to Hyper-V? Um, once you've, and I think this really, I have covered this before a long time ago. And I think a lot of people actually um, think that that's now finished, complete. Um, don't have to do anything. Um, and, and, you know, personally, I don't think it is. I, you know, I still think that you need to take um, 30 to 60 minutes after you've done your P to V or your V to V um, and remove all the phantom drivers. When I say phantom drivers, I mean drivers that um, have got uh, drivers installed in the operating system in the registry, but they're not currently active or running because the hardware is different. Uh, and if you look at device manager um, and you flag show hidden devices, you can actually start to remove all the hidden devices. Um, you know, there are issues um, that definitely you will see uh, over Ethernet connections, LAN connections, if you've set a static IP address um, on an IP address on a VMX Net 3 interface, for instance, uh, the virtual interface for VMware vSphere, uh, and you've set a static IP address on that, uh, you'll get a new interface in Hyper-V and you'll try to set the same interface on it and you will get a message about that being allocated to another interface in the system, which it's allocated effectively to a phantom interface and driver. Um, and sometimes you can actually basically get issues whereby you will set the IP addresses on that particular interface and you'll set the gateway and you'll shut down and restart and the gateway disappears. Um, and that's definitely because that you've not, remove the phantom drivers and the phantom devices. Um, and, you know, the other thing as well, really, that you need to actually basically remove things like VMware tools. For instance, VMware tools is still going to be in this particular uh, operating system installed because that's what was actually basically on the other uh, virtual machine. So there's no need for VMware tools in a Hyper-V environment, so remove it. If you're in a physical environment, you know, you may have physical software, etc. cetera, um, that touches real hardware that also basically needs removing. Uh, you know, one of those is the, the Dell slash HPE um, teaming drivers, etc. Uh, we don't seem to see them a lot anymore because teaming is often done in the guest OS now rather than the drivers. Um, but there were problems in the past that once you had the virtual machine running, you couldn't actually remove those drivers because it couldn't actually basically touch the hardware and the uninstall will fail. So sometimes these are things that you need to do before you actually do your P2V or your V2V. And some of these uh, things are actually explained in the FAQ uh, about P2V that was written about a million years ago when dinosaurs ruled the earth. And, you know, that article today um, still is, is very, very valid. OK, so they can see um, we have successfully created a P2V, V2V um, using disk to VHD. Um, I just wanted to do this video really um, for continuity sake. Um, that, you know, this is what people are usually using. This is what's normally recommended. Um, I think you can make a choice between using disk to VHD and Starwin P to V slash V to V converter, both which of course are free. Um, and of course, that's what well, this is also shutdown event tracker. Um, Another reason, you know, disk to VHD basically um, is the reason for this because we basically hot cloned the operating system. So I'm basically going to say cancel. And of course, we've got VMware tools in here as well. Um, like we saw before when we did the Starwing conversion, we saw the same error message about VMware tools, which is hence why I'm saying sort of kind of remove it. And um, you would have seen there the BDR backup software uh, basically just pop up and start to run as well. So... That's all I've got to talk about, disk to VHD. Uh, come back, because I'm going to pick another P to V application. I thought there were hundreds. I think in a previous video, I turned around and said there were about 50. I've really struggled to find another P to V slash V to V um, application. I'm sure there were a lot more, but I've only really found one. Um, there are uh, lots of functions now built into backup software. I know, I think I, I saw a Chronis. I think Termana said it had a P2V, V2V function. Veeam probably has a P2V function. I, I, you can certainly use um, Windows Veeam Agent to do uh, P2V, V2V because I've written an article about it. Um, 
but I was surprised that there weren't many more standalone applications out there than the one I found. Um, but anyway, in the next video, we're going to have a little look at using that. Um, and we'll see whether or not that I think it's any better than this to VHD, uh, VMware converter, um, or the Swiss Army knife um, of P2V slash V2V software products, which is Starwind. And, um, and at the moment, really, I've been trying to fit all this in because, you know, I'm answering questions on uh, experts exchange at five o'clock, um, trying to get this video done uh, and having a conversation with Starwin about the live migration issues. Um, anyway, so thanks very much for watching this video and um, come back for the next one when we have a little look at uh, another uh, P2V slash v, V2V application. So once again, thanks so much now and good bye.